We're looking now at question 3.4. The diagram below represents one model of the evolution of some hominids. So here's our diagram from earliest times to most recent times. So these would be the older and the more recent examples. And we can see that we have many different speciation events. We can just look at that picture. We can familiarize ourselves with the names of the organisms that we know and the information given to us on the table. Familiarize yourself with that and then start looking at the questions. 3.4.1, what do we call a diagram that has this shape of having um, speciation events and showing us ancestors and descendants? Do you remember? Can you shout it out? Because I'm sure I'm going to hear you. What is this diagram called? It is a phylogenetic, and look at its shape. Here's the, the stem, and there are all the branches, a phylogenetic tree. Phylo, we're referring to different groups of organism. Genetic, we're referring to how they are genetically related to each other. So this type of diagram is a phylogenetic tree. How many genera are represented in the diagram? In grade 10, you learned that we name organisms by their genus name and their species name. So we need to go back to that diagram and we need to work out how many different genus names are there. It's not asking us about species, it's asking us about the genera or the genus. Let's go back to our picture. Here's the genus name. Homo, there's Homo. All of those have the genus Homo and here we've got genus Australopithecus. So get back to our question. How many genera are presented or represented? We've got two. We've got Homo and we've got Australopithecus. Name the species represented by X on the diagram. So we're not interested in the genus name per se. We're interested in the genus and the species name of X. Here we go. Here is species X and we find out that species X used stone tools. That's our first clue. And we also see that species X evolved after the speciation event between Australopithecus and Homo. This tells us that we know that species X is Homo. And what kind of hominid used stone tools? tools. That you should remember is Homo habilis. We also have to name the species that shares a common ancestor with Homo erectus. Going back to our diagram, let's find Homo erectus. What species shares a common ancestor? With Homo erectus, we can see that it's going to be Homo naledi. Right. We're going to write down Homo naledi. And when you write this in your handwriting, the genus name must be with a capital letter, the species name with a small letter, and you must underline it. Which species of the genus Homo is the only one in existence today? 
We are Homo sapiens. There are no other hominids around in existence today. Another word for that is extent. All the other species of the genus Homo have gone extinct. Capital letter for Homo, small letter for sapiens, and we underline it. Name two forms of evidence that would have been used to support the information in the diagram. How would we have found those genetic links and said, these organisms belong in this group or phylum. These organisms belong together and these organisms are less related to those organisms. What kind of evidence would we have used? And we are asked for two kinds of evidence. There are many kinds of evidence. We could have compared fossil evidence. We could have compared cultural evidence in the form of tools that groups that have very similar tools are more closely related to groups that have very different tools. But our defining evidence comes from genetic molecular, if you want to, or DNA evidence genetic evidence in the form of looking at molecular similarities and differences between proteins and DNA, that helps us to put these organisms into a group. You only had to give two forms of evidence, whichever one you gave. Remember, don't add the third one. It's just wasting your time. Your marker will only look at the first two. So make sure that the first two you give, are, you're very, very sure of those. All right, the average cranial capacity. So we're looking at the inside of the skull of Homo sapiens is 1,500 cubic centimeters. Compared to only 520 cubic centimeters in Australopithecus africanus. Explain the significance. What is the importance of this difference? Well, a bigger cranium can host a bigger brain. Whereas a smaller cranium, we've got a much smaller brain. And that is the significance. A bigger cranium or a cranium that has a larger volume or capacity is going to be able to have a bigger brain. It's going to have a more complex brain than an organism with a smaller cranial capacity. And what does a bigger brain and a more complex brain mean? It means that the animal that has the larger cranial capacity, Homo sapiens, that's you and me, we have the possibilities opened for thinking. We have the possibilities opening for reasoning, for things like language development, for things like tool usage, etc. A larger brain means more complex ways of thinking and doing in our lives. Explain how the fossils of Australopithecus africanus, species X, that was Homo habilis, remember, and Homo erectus, which is upright humans are used to support the out of Africa hypothesis. Well, remember what the out of Africa hypothesis is. That hypothesis says all of modern humans, do you believe me that that's Africa? All modern humans evolved in Africa 
and then from Africa spread to Europe and then to Asia and then from Asia to the islands and Australia and we need to remember that Asia and North America at times have been in contact with each other over the Bering Straits and so humans could also then have migrated to the Americas obviously first North America and then South America so that is our out of Africa hypothesis the out of Africa hypothesis states that this Africa is the origin of modern humans so how would the fossils of Australopithecus, Habilis and Erectus be used to support this? Well Australopithecus africanus is only found in Africa, nowhere else. Homo habilis is only found in Africa, nowhere else. We have Homo erectus found in Africa but also other areas but the oldest fossils are found in Africa and the younger fossils are found in other areas so this evidence seems to say that we know that Australopithecus africanus and Homo habilis had common ancestry but they're limited to Africa we don't find them in Europe, we don't find them in Asia, Australia or the Americas. So we also know that Homo erectus had common ancestors with Homo habilis. We find Homo habilis restricted to Africa. We find Homo erectus on the continent of Africa but also in Europe and Asia which means that Homo erectus did move out of Africa but the earlier fossils of Homo habilis are uh, sorry Homo erectus are found in Africa so you've got to do a lot of reasoning and thinking there